A few ghost stories never hurt nobody, but paranormal forces do seem to haunt people all over the world, day by day. Some do believe in the paranormal, others don't, but it's hard to deny that there are strange events that happen to some people, and it might be even harder to explain them. Enjoy these allegedly true stories about ghosts, demons, and other hauntings, and be sure to send me your scary stories at darkstories.org. I'd love to hear more stories about Not Deer, as people really seem to love that first one. Now, let's begin. Hook-Handed Man From Dogman97 This happened so fast and so long ago, I can barely recall what even occurred. What I do remember is how badly it affected me as a child, and how easy it is to confirm it with my cousins and my sister, that it really did happen. We still talk about it to this day. We had a static caravan in a place called Thirsk in England. It was pretty small, maybe 15 to 16 caravans, a pub, and a little play area out front, where I spent most of my time playing with my cousins. There was this rusty old tractor that just sat dormant for years there, kind of like a statue for the caravan park. The locals said it belonged to a man who used to farm the land before it was a caravan park, but he was murdered by his brother. Long story short, his brother killed him and cut off his left arm and right hand to make it look like an accident with the tractor. But he was caught and hanged by the locals. Now, there was nothing really creepy about it at the time, but now it freaks me the heck out, knowing we used to climb and play on that tractor. One day, my cousins, my sister, and I were playing on and around the tractor. I suddenly slipped and fell on it, cutting my ankle open pretty bad. As I fell off of it, my foot got stuck, and I was dangling upside down. At the time, I was pretty certain I was going to die being as young as I was. What I do remember was a man rushing over to me while my cousins and sisters were running away screaming. I was hoisted up by something gripping the collar of my shirt. Then my foot came loose, and I fell on the grass safely. The scariest part was I didn't see who it was, but my cousins and sister were extremely adamant that it was a man with one arm and a hook hand. After he rescued me, he vanished into thin air according to them. My sister said he was tall and skinny, had dark jeans, and a dirty green long sleeve shirt. He had no hair with a dirty muddy face, and his eyes looked like gray holes. Yeah, we do bring this up every time we get into the idea of us all going camping or whatever. It still very much exists in all our minds. Personally, I had a lot of trouble coping with what happened. I sometimes believe I was inches from death and I somehow managed to cross worlds, and he also did at the right time to stop me falling and breaking my neck. I had nightmares about deformities for months. I saw a woman in white. From Parking Amphibian 647 I'm a guy in his early 20s. I lived in Texas at the time this happened. I'm now a scout in the United States Army. Back then, though, about three years ago, I worked at Olive Garden to pay for community college as my plan at the time was to become a police officer. The Olive Garden I worked at was about a 30-minute drive through the forested areas, just outside of the Houston city limits. I enjoyed the commute, especially in the dead of night after a long shift. I am a solitary person by nature, and I love the night, and I love to drive, so that time was very therapeutic for me. One night I was coming home, listening to music, taking some drags off of my vape in the car. Just nicotine, no other stuff. I stopped at the stoplight that was just around the corner from my street. The time was about 1.30am. There was only one other car waiting for the light. A jet black F-150 that was in the left turn lane across the street. I was turning left as well, and so we sat there for a moment, just waiting for the light to turn green. The streetlights lit the intersection fairly well here, 
but the forest around us was black as night, so most people would honestly think it was a pretty spooky street, especially with how narrow it was. But I'm just not really bothered by that stuff. I was just relaxing and ready to get home and get my uniform off. The truck's light turned green before mine, so he began to turn left in front of me. What I saw next, I didn't quite understand. It was like my brain took a few moments to process what my eyes were seeing. The passenger window was rolled fully down, and sitting there was the palest woman I have ever seen. She was wearing a white hijab, which is a Muslim headdress, and her eyes were blacker than the dark woods around me. She was looking right at me, no, glaring at me. Her head turned as the truck passed in front of me. My eyes fixated on her, and the truck completed the turn without skipping a beat. I sat there in shock for a moment. What the heck was that? I said to myself, unable to even believe what had just happened right in front of me. Moments after the taillights disappeared into the woods, I was overcome with a feeling of dread, and I got some of the worst goosebumps I've ever felt. Her appearance was terrifying, but on top of that, there were several things about her that were even more anomalous. For example, pale white hijabs are extremely uncommon. Next was the fact that, as much as I would like to explain it away, her eyes were jet black, not the pupils, both eyeballs, jet black. Yet somehow I could tell she was staring right at me. This is counterintuitive. Humans adapted small pupils compared to other mammals to be able to see where other humans are looking. We know when someone is looking right into our eyes because we can see their pupils. That's why in movies and TV shows, when someone has black eyes, their eyes look dead, so to speak, and you cannot tell where they're looking. You can only be clued in by where their head is pointed. But I knew for a fact in that moment, her eyes were looking straight into mine, and that fact terrified me more than anything. When I got home, I researched the hijab, looking for anything that may tell me if it was some kids looking to scare some people, but nothing added up. Halloween was months away, or did someone manage to buy or find a white hijab right around town at 1am and stare at people with fully black eyes? I believe now that what I saw was a woman in white. I never heard about anything bad happening to a man in a black F-150 in my town after that, so I hope he's alright. Maybe I was just crazy and sleep deprived, but it just seemed too real for me to pass it on as sleep deprivation. Demons in the Haunted Ranch House From When Ghost Come Out Four years ago, we lived in the most haunted house we'd ever lived in. I've told a lot of stories about this house already, but I didn't tell all the stories that happened in my old ranch house in Langston. It was a residential ranch-style house. The home was built in 1965, and it was built in a cul-de-sac neighborhood. Everything that happened here in this home was between when I was 4 years old to 12 years old, and at the time my blood sister was 2 years old to 10 years old. So yeah, we lived there for about 8 years, and in that time, we experienced one of the most horrifying hauntings anyone could experience. The following happened in 2012. While the house was located in Langston, it was originally registered through a town called Stanton, because Langston doesn't have a town hall. My older cousin used to live there in that ranch house before we did, and before we moved in, there was a lot of wallpaper inside. The bathroom was this hot pink color as well. The outside of the house was painted yellow too. But when my cousin lived there, she mentioned that she had seen a black shadow on one occasion. She explained how a chair she had would begin to rock all by itself when she was alone. And on another occasion, she heard an old man coughing in the living room. But it was just her and the kids there. Since then, the home was redone inside. The wallpaper was ripped down and replaced with drywall. The outside of the house was repainted a gray color now. She burned that weird chair after it rocked by itself, and she since moved out. I remember when we first moved in there, when we walked through the front door, 
we were met with the living room, which was a red maroon color. From there was the hallway and the kitchen, which both had popcorn walls. After the kitchen was the dining room, a yellow color. Then down the hall was a bathroom and a bedroom on one side, and two more bedrooms on the other side of the hall. One night, my blood sister had heard the toilet flush by itself one night when she went up to use the bathroom. The place was haunted for sure. My dad would often feel watched by someone or something in the garage. Plus, the basement door was right in front of the garage door. We used to have people living with us in the basement, but they moved out a short while later, and the basement was a completely empty room for a while. So it was vacant. There wasn't supposed to be anyone down there. However, we heard something coming from the basement one day. My blood sister and I were doing homework in the kitchen. Suddenly, we hear our computer turn on with the volume at max. Startled, we turned it down, wondering what was going on, when suddenly, we heard the loudest slam coming from the basement. It sounded like a massive bang, and it echoed through and shook the entire house. The two of us were freaking out. We ran to the garage where my dad was at the time, and we screamed at him. We wanted to know what was going on. He went down into the basement, and when he did, he didn't find anyone there. But he did find one of the cabinet doors jammed shut. He had to punch it back open. As previously mentioned, we used to have people living with us in the basement. Specifically, my grandma and grandpa. We had the upstairs, basically, and they had the downstairs. They lived with us for only about two years. They had an Xbox 360 that they would play. But when they moved there with us, they noticed that the Xbox would be turned on, despite having been powered off before. It would come on while they were in bed. My grandpa asked me years later if it was me doing it, but I don't remember doing anything like that, nor does my sister. Besides, we were always too scared to go into that basement. Every time I'd gone down into that basement, I felt as if I was being watched, and the feeling was so strong, all of this made me realize, never ignore your gut feeling. I believe it's there for a reason. And when I was in that basement, the feeling in my gut was so intense. I knew something was in there. Because of that, I was scared to go into the basement. My blood sister admitted to feeling the same too. At times when I was walking up the stairs, not walking down the stairs, but only going up, I would feel like someone or something was following me up the stairs. There would just be this strong energy behind me. But when I turned to look, I would be alone no one else on the stairs. This would usually make me run up the stairs as fast as I could to get away from something that I knew was there but couldn't see. My dad also recalled hearing noises in our basement, like things moving around after my grandparents moved out. He said he would do his best to ignore them, that whatever it was didn't do no harm, so he'd let it do its thing. I also remember seeing black shadow figures peeking in at me through my bedroom door. This was around when I was five or six years old. Sometimes these shadow figures would be as little as a kid looking up at me, and other times it would be almost taller than my door, like a grown man looking down at me. I would see it pop its head through the door in the corner of my eyes, but when I'd look over, it would dash back in behind the door or wall. Imagine someone sneaking and peeking their head into the room. You see them out of the corner of your eyes, but when you look to see, they quickly dart their head back in behind the wall. This would happen some nights, but not every night. Another time, when I was really young, I would often talk to the wall, and no one would be there. I would be talking to nothing, and I barely remember it. My dad and mom caught me doing it one night. My talking had woke them up, and they came to check on me. They watched me from the next room over, and eventually I just fell down and went back to sleep. Another time, my sister was walking down the hall. She looked into the bedroom and caught me again talking to the wall. I was just standing there this time, talking to nothing. She walked away. It's crazy that I don't remember this. I wonder who I was talking to. 
My sister's room was only separated by a wall, the same one I talked to, and it was the same wall we would hear knocking from. Dad thought it was just us playing around, but it wasn't. He even separated our beds as far as he could from that wall to keep us from knocking on it. But it still happened, because it wasn't us. One night when my sister woke up, she said she felt as if she was being watched. She looked out her window, and she saw this thing standing in the middle of the road. She described it as a really old man that was so extremely skinny, he was basically a skeleton. He was also very tall, with really old clothes. He had white, long, scraggly hair, and he had green, glowing eyes. He was just standing there, staring at her through the window from the middle of the road. She popped her head down, then popped it back up, and she still saw him there. But the next time she blinked, he was gone, and she never did see him again. She told our dad that morning, but dad thought it was her just being a kid, an overactive imagination and all that. Years later, a lot more had happened. One time, my dad heard someone walking down the hallway. He was up using the bathroom, and when he went back to bed, he suddenly heard footsteps going down the hallway. No one was there when he looked. He thought it was us, because they didn't sound too heavy. He said they sounded like little kids' footsteps going down the hall. He said honestly he was pretty spooked when he heard it, and he asked us that morning, but we weren't up at that time. One time when my dad was in the basement with one of his exes, they were down there taking pictures, and at one point they took one in the basement bathroom. Not too long after they took the picture, they logged in to view the photos, and in one of the photos in the basement bathroom, they saw this little girl in a white dress with long black hair, a child, just standing next to the sink, staring right into the camera. I remember this incident well. I remember it spooked everyone in the family at the time. One time, my dad heard the sound of a radio coming from my sister's room. It woke him up. We didn't have that sort of radio in the house, and none of the TVs were on, and everyone was in bed. The following morning, he told us about it, but no one else had heard it. One night, my sister felt tugging on her blanket, and it woke her up. When she looked down, Nothing was there. She went back to sleep and suddenly she felt someone or something pulling and tugging at the blanket again. My family searched her room for whoever or whatever was causing it, but they didn't find anything out of place. They assumed or rather hoped it was just a rat. Years later, after the basement was empty, my older stepsister needed to move into our basement for a while, as we didn't have any room upstairs. When she was sleeping in the basement, she suddenly heard what sounded like grinding. It was like a shovel scraping against concrete. It scared her pretty bad. And that morning in the basement, we searched for what it might have been. But once again, we didn't find anything strange down there. One day when my dad and his ex were talking on the phone in the kitchen, suddenly all the photos on the living room walls and shelves flew right from their positions he said he'd heard a crashing noise in the living room. He ran in there, only to find all the photos on the floor. He had to pick them all back up. A lot happened over there at that house. One of the more frequent occurrences was that my sister's old room would always start to smell like alcohol out of nowhere, like someone had been drinking really heavily in that room. Keep in mind, my sister was only seven at the time. Not to mention my old pit bull, would always growl at the corners of the walls over there. Just out of nowhere, my dog would just start growling at corners, like something was there that we could not see. Me, my dad, and my sister found old scraggly hair in her room one day. No one knows where it came from. It didn't look like my sister's, mine, nor my dad's, nor anyone that was in that house before then. There was also another strange happening going on, when my dad would get into relationships with girls while living in that house, things would get more awful. Like when my dad was dating a woman after my real mom left him, things got more active. We'd see and hear the spirits more and more. One time when my dad first met my stepmom, 
we brought her over to the house. Keep in mind, we never said a thing to them about ghosts or weird happenings over here. My youngest stepsister went walking down the hall into my sister's bedroom when she saw that same old man that my sister saw standing in the road through the window. But he was standing in my sister's room this time, the same old man, super skinny, old clothes, long scraggly hair. However, this time, his eyes were glowing red. He was staring at her through the doorway, standing in the middle of my sister's room. When my stepsister blinked, the man was gone. After that, we began to hear knocking on our bedroom windows at night. It seemed to be coming from outside, and it would wake us up in our beds. It seemed to always happen between 12 a.m. and 4 a.m., we would go to see outside in the middle of the night to see who it was, but every time, there was no one there. Apparently, my oldest aunt told us that my dad had heard knocking on his bedroom windows too. When I was seven or eight years old, I began to see these dark shadow people almost all night every night. I would be watching TV, or when I'd wake up and need to use the bathroom, I would see them in the corner of my eyes always poking their heads out at me. Sometimes I would see it pass by my door as well. I began to sometimes see them standing in the doorway from the hallway in the dark. Just as before, sometimes it was a little kid, and sometimes it was a man. It became more and more frequent, and I started to dread walking out and using the bathroom because of it. On a different occasion, my dad and my stepmom were talking to each other one night in their bedroom. It must have been around 9.30. Out of nowhere... There were these four big bangs on our big living room window that faced out into our front yard. All the dogs began to claw and bark at that window, and when my dad and stepmom went to investigate, they didn't find anyone that could have done it. All of this together makes me think there are things really out there, things we can't explain. Since then, I wonder if anything new has happened in that home since we've moved. Better yet, we noticed that the house was up for sale last time we saw it. Over the years, I swear I noticed that the house would be bought and sold frequently, as if people were moving in, then quickly moving out. The Christmas Visitor From It's Only Me When I was in college, I lived at home to save money. I went to school locally, so it just made sense. My sister attended the same school, but chose to live in the dorms. One year, a few days before Christmas, my parents were out shopping and my sister was still in the dorms, so I was home alone with only the cat for company. She was good company, so I was fine with her, a good book, and some hot cocoa. I went upstairs and reclined on my bed, and I began to read. The cat curled up beside me, taking a nap. It was about 8 p.m., so it was fully dark outside. Now, snow in my area is rare in December, but this particular year we had a good amount of snow. It had snowed earlier that day, so there was a fresh, untouched blanket on the ground around the house. I had probably been reading for about 45 minutes or so when I heard a knock on the front door. The cat sat up, and I sighed, beginning to stand up, when a knock resounded on the side of the house. I paused, confused. Why would someone knock on the door, then almost immediately knock on the side of the house? Then a knock sounded at the back sliding glass doors. I was getting worried. This isn't normal behavior. The cat's ears were perked up. She was listening intently. Then a knock came from the other side of the house, louder and with enough force I could feel a vibration in the floor. Then it knocked on the front again, then it sped up. It began pounding in quick succession on each side of the house, in sequence going faster and faster, until the whole house was shaking with this thunderous knocking. I ran into my dad's upstairs office, grabbing his 45 that he kept in a locked drawer and a baseball bat. I huddled on my bed, terrified as no living being could move around an entire two-story home that fast and pound with that force. And if it was more than one person, I was in trouble. The knocking probably went on for only a couple of minutes, 
but believe me when I say it felt like hours. Then, just as suddenly as it had started, it stopped. Dead silence. I sat in my room, my cat perched on my bed beside me with the ears up listening intently, until we heard my parents' car in the driveway. At that, I bolted out of bed, ran downstairs, and greeted them at the door with a forty-five in one hand. The safety was still on, I'm glad to say my dad taught me well, and a baseball bat in the other, trying to stutter out what had just happened. They believed me because weird things have always happened to both sides of my family. My dad took the gun from my hand, and we both went outside together to check for tracks in the rare new fallen snow. Nothing. Not even animal tracks. The snow was pristine. There were no marks in the house either. I have no idea what it was that wanted in so badly that night before Christmas. I'm just thankful it never came back. An update to the curious dark figure. From Paul Blart. This is an update to the curious dark figure story I wrote back in October of 2021. I thought I'd give a little update to the happenings over the last few months between myself and the other security officers. But just to reiterate... I'm a security officer in the Milwaukee area, working the night shift, and as of now, I've been working at this business for going on six months. I continue to see dark figures moving about, and that constant feeling of being watched is still there. Whether it's my guardian angel or something else, I'll never know. While monitoring the cameras, I hear footsteps down the hallways with no one there, or I hear quiet, dull whining in the distance. This is in addition to light thuds or clicks. This could just be my imagination due to being tired or normal building creaks and functions. However, with some of these experiences, that just doesn't make sense. One of these security officers, L, who also works the night shift, shares the same experiences of hearing footsteps and seeing the occasional dark figures. One day on a foot patrol of the facility, he was securing the garage and as he turned off the lights, as he was about to walk out of the garage, back into the building, he heard a voice coming from the other side of the garage, behind a trash can, calling out to him to come over to it. Now what was truly terrifying, was that whatever was calling out to L, it did so, in his own voice. Needless to say, he noped out of there and returned to the desk. I can only imagine he either ran or power walked back. After seeing too many scary movies, this is definitely something you don't go and explore. After calming down, he continued to do the shift without a hitch. But I remember being like, don't tell me that, because I don't want to fear having to dread that event happening to me. Luckily, so far it hasn't. L told me that not a few days after that shift, from the previous story, he would hear things down the hall directly behind him, but would look around, and nothing would be there. Later on, out of the blue, a placard in front of the desk on a table just fell over. The placard is an upside-down T-shape, so it couldn't just fall on its own. It was either pushed or somehow a breeze came through. From my experience in Dells, there's never a breeze, especially indoors here. There's no AC unit. Nothing is blowing in the area. When we talked about it jokingly, we just said it must have been the wind and laughed. But we knew it wasn't. It could be the same thing as when the soap dispensers go off for no reason behind me. Nothing happens without something causing it to happen, whether it's of this world or not. One night, one of the female officers reported hearing an older woman crying not far from the desk, but after investigating, there was no woman to be found in the area. That certainly sent chills down her spine. However, I told her that's a normal occurrence here, although usually I hear it as a dull whining. This is the same officer that still almost refuses to come back, or at least wants to stay on the day shift. Any recent similar experience to the one where I'd seen a dark figure in a window while I was on patrol outside the building, I was once again seeing a headed figure standing over my shoulder as I walked down the hallway. Again, this is a long corridor with mirror-like windows at the end due to it being dark. I turned around and of course found nothing. Then while sitting at the desk later on in the night, 
I was scrolling through the daily news and I heard a light tap on the window to the outside. This was a lighter tap than the ones I've experienced before. So curiously, I looked over to where I'd heard it, and I kid you not, as my gaze crossed over the main door threshold to the window next to it, a semi-translucent young child was standing there, staring at me with dark eyes in the doorway. However, by the time my brain registered it, and when I moved my eyes back, he was gone. My heart instantly fell to the ground. Now there are older figures and a kid. I've always found kid spirits to be a bit more intense and scarier than old ones. Maybe it's all those horror movies I've watched. Other than getting a drink of water, I pretty much refused to leave the desk. It was just a gut feeling, but I wasn't looking to get pushed down the stairs that night, as I felt it was a bit more active than usual. I can see everything from the cameras at the desk, luckily. This was just a few weirder experiences over the last few months that we've had. I can say for certain that I'm not as afraid now as I first was, and I think it's due to it being a regular occurrence. I'm more than happy to keep giving updates if any more crazy happenings come about. That brings us to the end of this episode of Darkness Prevails. More terrifying stories are on the way soon, so subscribe and smash that like button. By the way, did you know this show is available as a podcast called Unexplained Encounters? Just search for, follow, and rate Unexplained Encounters on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app. This show is part of the EerieCast network. Go to EerieCast.com for more scary podcasts, such as Freaky Folklore, which explores your favorite monsters, myths, and mysteries, as well as Redwood Bureau, a fictional horror podcast about an agent on the run from an evil secret organization that captures supernatural creatures and entities. Well, thanks for tuning in. Stay safe out there and stay creepy. Because this world is a strange one. <laughs>